Hello students, uh, welcome to my channel which is dedicated for chemistry learners particularly. So today we are going to see about the career in chemistry episode number 2 in research field. In uh, previous video we have seen the opportunities for chemistry student in academic field that is in teaching field. In this video we are going to deal with opportunities for a chemistry student in research field. Now, if you are a student of B.Sc. Chemistry, if you are a student of B.Sc. first year, second year and third year and if you have one of the subject as a chemistry, then this video is for you. In this video, you will get idea about what are the opportunities in research field for a chemistry students. So, if you are doing B.Sc. in chemistry, B.Sc. in chemistry, then and if you are a student right now of FY, SY or TY, then the first thing you have to do is uh, you have to study hard. You have to study really hard of this chemistry. Believe me, there are a lot of opportunities in the research field for chemistry students. If you just you have to do the study hard. Now, why you have to study hard? Because if you secured a good mark in B.Sc. Chemistry, then and only then you will get admission for M.Sc. Chemistry. Because there is a lot of competition uh, today for getting admission in M.Sc. Chemistry. Now you can do MSc anywhere, you can do MSc in colleges, you can do MSc in universities, you can do MSc in institutes, but anywhere you want to take the admission you have to face the entrance examination and if there is a no entrance examination then you have to secure a good marks in uh, B.Sc. Chemistry. So the moral is that you have to take a good marks in MSc. Chemistry degree and you have to secure good marks in entrance examination as well to uh, take the admission in MSc uh, chemistry. Now you can do MSc in colleges as well but if you want to do really a good career in a research field of chemistry then I will advise you to take admission in the universities. Now there are various state universities available in which you can take the admission. There are various central universities available where you can take the admission. There are various autonomous institute like IIC Bangalore, Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. Uh, you know Indian Institute of Technologies, uh, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research that is ISER, uh, ICT, Institute of Chemical Technology. So there are various autonomous bodies, autonomous institute as well where you can take the admission for the MSc. Now in this institute if you want to take the admission in this institute like IIT, IISC, uh, then uh, some other institute, central universities you have to face the joint admission test jam examination from that jam examination you will get admission in the iits okay so there you can do the your msc again if you have to do the msc in state universities then there are a lot of state universities which conduct the uh, entrance examination for the admission in chemistry in pg courses so you have to study hard really for getting admission there in the universities now suppose you have got the admission for the MSc Chemistry, MSc Chemistry. Now how you will get in this step? You have to secure a good mark, secure good mark in BSc and in entrance examination, entrance exam, and also. If you want to take admission in IITs, then this JAM examination. Now, if you have done this, if you are passing this, then you will get admission in MSc Chemistry courses. Now, MSc Chemistry can be done in various branches like Physical Chemistry or you can do in Analytical Chemistry or you can do in Inorganic Chemistry or you can do in organic chemistry okay so these are the basically four branches physical chemistry analytical chemistry inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry there are again more branches like medicinal chemistry okay then biochemistry again environmental chemistry is also there so you can do a PG from any chemistry branch but particularly if you want to do a career in chemistry in research field then you have to choose either this physical, analytical, inorganic and organic chemistry. 
now which branch is suitable to you that is a point of discussion that we will we'll discuss in another video but right now i will just say that if you want to do a research career in pharma sector then you have to focus on this organic chemistry branch you have to take admission for msc organic chemistry or msc analytical chemistry in physical chemistry as well as in inorganic chemistry also there is a lot of scope but particularly if you want to uh, do the career in research field of pharma industry then you have to take admission for organic chemistry or analytical chemistry okay so if you have, you have got the admission for msc chemistry in universities or in institute then again the one thing you have to do is study hard because there is a no substitute for hard work if you are doing uh, career in research then you should be very sound with your basic knowledge of chemistry so you have to study hard again you have to secure good marks in msc chemistry because the further uh, journey is depends upon your marks in msc okay if you secure less marks say below first class then a uh, lot of doors are closed for you because you will not appear for national level examination examinations that are there okay so once you got the admission for msc chemistry in universities or in colleges or in institutes then the second thing you have to do is you have to really study hard so that you will secure a, a good marks say above first class and it is not uh, that much of hard to secure a marks above first class okay it is easy task just you have to study 2 3 hours uh, per day or depending upon your capacity okay the first thing is that you have to uh, secure a good marks in chemistry now what is after that that we will discuss over here now after securing a good marks in msc chemistry after securing first class in msc chemistry what is next that we will see so there are many examinations uh, which are conducted in that particularly net examination is there net this stands for national eligibility test okay so this is the examination and again there is a gate examination graduate aptitude test in engineering so you have to appear for these two uh, exams if you have a first class in msc then you will appear for this net examination and gate examination i will particularly focus on this net examination this net examination is conducted by csir and ugc okay uh, this test is conducted by national testing agency nta okay now this exam you can appear after completion of your post graduation in msc with first class now details about this examination that is again a part of discussion for in a separate video right now i will just explain you that you have to appear this examination and you have to secure a good rank say junior research fellowship rank jrf rank you have to secure now uh, lakhs of student appear uh, per year for this examination net examination in whole india only near about 1500 or 2000 students are selected okay now there are two ranks in this one for one rank is ls that is lectureship and another rank is jrf junior research fellowship so if you uh, got selected for for this rank jrf rank then what happens further that we will explain Now once you secured a JRF rank in NET, so we will say that NET JRF rank, okay, only I can say 400 to 500 students are selected for this rank, NET JRF rank. So if you are selected for this rank, then you will get admission for PhD in any universities, universities or institutes or colleges i can say so anywhere you can take the admission for the phd so better way if you are getting this rank net jrf rank you try to take admission in institutes like uh, 
IIT, Indian Institute of Science. So um, about 20 IITs are there in the India. So you can take admission there, IIT. Then again there are ISERS, uh, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Then IISC, Indian Institute of Science. Okay. Then there are NITs, okay, National Institute of Technologies. So there are many research institutes available in the India where you can take admission for the PhD. Okay. Now based on what? Based on this net examination, based on this net JRF rank, uh, you have to fill the form of that particular institute. Suppose you have to apply for NCL, that is National Chemical Laboratory, which is situated in Pune. It is very renowned institute where you can do your PhD. So if you want to do the PhD in NCL, then after clearing NET examination, you have to fill the form of that NET uh, NCL after notification and you have to face the interview. And based on your performance of interview, you will get admission for the PhD. Now, why this JRF rank is important? Because you will get admissions in this renowned institute for your PhD degree. And along with government will pay around 40,000 rupees per month for your research. So this junior research fellowship is awarded for two years. And after that, uh, senior research fellowship is awarded, which amount is near about 45,000 per month. So government will pay 40 to 50,000 rupees per month for five years for your research. So imagine it how important it is because 40,000, 50,000 is not a less amount, it is very big amount, okay. So due to this JRF rank, government, Indian government will provide you 40,000, 50,000 per month to do the PhD anywhere in India, like in institutes, colleges, universities. But if you have secured a JRF rank, then you are a very good or intelligent in chemistry. So you have to do the PhD in NCL. IITs, ENITs, ISERs or I can say national institutes like even ICT as well. So where you can do your PhD. Now why these institutes are important? These institutes are research oriented institutes and the scientists available there for guiding you are very excellent in their field and you can do a good research. You can uh, publish a lot of international papers like uh, RSC, uh, American Chemical Society. So you, if you publish a good work there in the institutes, then further after completion of your PhD, you will get a banner of these institutes like uh, you have done the PhD in uh, IITs or you have done the PhD in NCL. Then after PhD, after PhD, you can get directly job in a pharma industry in R&D center. So every pharma industry has research and development wing and there you will get the job with a good package say around 10 lakh, 9 to 10 lakhs per year or beyond that also you can get. This is the, just the starting payment but once you entered in the pharma industry so yearly increments are very high okay because the post you get there is directly of a scientist or leader where you have to do a tremendous ta task in the R&D departments. And there is a lot of scope. Now what, what is there in R&D? I will explain a bit, very short example. Suppose you know paracetamol is the tablet. Okay. So that is uh, synthesized by some industry, by some methodology. Suppose you are a R&D scientist and you have developed some method by which there is a reduction in cost. So that will help in corrodes to that industry to produce that paracetamol. And it is not a big task to give some lacks to you for doing this work. So you have tremendous scope in R&D departments if you have knowledge, okay. So this is the power of research, this is the power of science by which you can grow. So this is the uh, thing which you can do after PhD. Now some students are there who will say that we uh, further we want to learn again some uh, things, new things. Then after PhD, you can apply for postdoc as well. Postdoc means post doctorate uh, education after the PhD. Now you can apply for the postdoc in uh, foreign, in foreign as well as in India. Now if you have done the PhD in national institutes like NCL, IITs, ISER, NITs, then there is a no point to do the postdoc in India. You can apply for the 
uh, in foreign countries like US, uh, uh, Canada, France, etc. So where you can do your post doc in uh, good institute, research institute. Now in post doc is something like uh, one year or two year. Uh, association with some big scientist where you, you have to do some uh, tasks which are assigned by that scientist and from that process you learn uh, that knowledge which you have not learned in doing your PhD and uh, believe me the scholarship which are given by that institutes are very high near about 3 lakh 4 lakh per month scholarship is given by that institute for doing the postdoc so if you have to earn a good amount of money simultaneously by taking the education by acquiring the new skill then you can do the postdoc now after postdoc you can apply again for the pharma industry in r and d departments okay so after completion of your phd also you can join the r and d departments after completion of your postdoc also you can join uh, join the pharma industries even after completion of your msc organic chemistry you can join the r and d but if you want to do a very good in pharma career then i will say that you complete your phd first and then postdoc and then join the pharma industry now yeah, the salary which is given in the pharma industry after uh, completion of your phd or after completion of postdoc is very high uh, very high that means if you do uh, the a job for four to five years or say ten years then you will get that much of amount by which you can start your own plant or own pharma industry so that much money is earned by the uh, scientists which are there in the R&D departments so believe me students if you are doing a BSc in chemistry then you have a sky is the limit in the research field of the chemistry just you have to do a study hard you have to do a good study at bsc level so that you will get admission for msc in universities you have to do a good study for securing the first class in msc you have to do a good study to crack this net examination or gate examination uh, similar to net there is a gate examination in which if you secured a good rank you will get admission for phd in iits with fellowship as well so after completing this net examination and gate examination you will do the phd in various renowned institute with fellowship for 5 years and after phd you will you can go directly into the pharma field as a scientist or you can go to the foreign for the postdoc with a high amount of scholarship so there is a bright future for for you waiting if you do a good study in your bs level so this is about the career opportunities for a chemistry students in research field, particularly in pharma field. So I hope this video uh, will inspire you to do something in the career of research. And believe me students, in India, there is a lot of scope for the research. In India, there is a lot of scope for the basic sciences. There is a need of time because a development of every country actually depends upon the research in basic science not in applied science so it is there a lot of scope in our country to do the career in basic science research so i hope this video is helpful to you uh, you can uh, drop me a comment in comment box uh, how you feel after listening this video and if you have any query you can drop the comment okay so we'll stop in this video thank you we'll meet in the next video with another content thank you